Good afternoon, everyone, or should I say good morning if you're following us from Brazil. I must say that uh, I'm very sorry for not being able to, to be in person uh, participating in the fourth edition of the uh, workshop of this international workshop organized by the Structural Development Macroeconomics Research Group. But still, I'm glad that we have the possibility of, of collaborating and having these uh, presentations also in kind of bland mode uh, with, uh, with uh, connection, with internet connection, right? It gives me a little bit of bad vibes on the one hand because it reminds me of the times of, of, of COVID, but that at, at the other hand, it's beautiful that we have the chance to to do this and, and to even though in different parts of the world we still can can interact, can connect and interact. So this is this is the, the ordinary session C, ordinary session C with the title Climate Change or the theme Climate Change, Environmental Justice and Public Debt Dynamics. Today we have three presentations. I will be presenting uh, an article entitled uh, Endogenous Political Clavages and Economics of Climate Change. And uh, we also have uh, Nandu, Nandu eh, Sasidaran that will be presenting informal economies in transition and public debt uh, dynamics. We have a third article uh, scheduled for this session by Mu Jong Ko from the University of College London in the UK, uh, and he will be talking about uh, how can the basic income truly act as a trigger for self-organizing a new resilient system of agri-food and environmental justice. So um, I will begin. I will begin the session uh, uh, presenting. Uh, uh, my joint paper, this joint paper, with two dear friends, uh, um, Serena Sordi from the University of Siena and uh, Christian Proagno from the University uh, of Bamberg. And as I, as I anticipated, uh, the title is Endogenous Political Clavages and Economics uh, of Climate Change. So we should keep our presentations between 20 and 30 minutes, maybe closer to 20 minutes, but then uh, uh, please keep uh, posting your questions and, and, and feedback on our chat uh, on YouTube, and uh, we will have a moment to, to reply to this, to this, uh, to the point that the audience raise uh, after after each uh, presentation. So. <clears throat> A couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, Piketty and co-authors they published uh, a paper in the Quarterly Journal of Economics, where they document a major transformation in in Western politics. So what you have is that if you go back to the 50s, 60s, and even the 70s, um, the center left or left parties they were supported by lower earnings and less educated voters, while uh, right-wing parties, they, they were supported by, by the rich, so to speak, highest earning uh, uh, voters, but also most educated, the most educated, the highly educated uh, uh, voters. But then you have a big change and 50 years later, after the 2000s and 2010s, what we have is that the poor, so to speak, so that the, 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 the lower earning voters, they continue to support the left, the, the highest earning voters continue to support the right, but we have a switch in terms of education. And now the most educated voters are voting left and the relatively less educated voters are, are voting or are supporting are supporting uh, right wing right wing parties. And the forces behind this apparent disconnect between income and education or the income and educational effects, they remain somehow uh, controversial. I, I would say that there is not even a consensus on the, on the what is the right framework uh, to place the analysis, because, for example, you could think about these transformations as as a shift in a unique equilibrium point of the social economic system. But of, co of course, you could also conceive a multi-stable system when you are actually transiting between different basins, basins of attraction, for example. Uh, what, what everybody more or less agrees is that uh, the analysis cannot ignore social cultural social cultural elements. So the, the classical distinction between left and right from an economic distributive point of view should should uh, uh, leave space or we should leave space in our analysis to include also uh, considerations, social cultural considerations, a left and right from a social cultural uh, point of view. Now, in fact, Piketty, Piketty and co-authors, they, they do document that environmental attitudes and environmental attitudes, the environment is part of the social cultural dimension of, 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 of politics. Uh, they, they document they are an important piece in the puzzle because the rise of green parties explains a half, so 50%, around 50% 
of the positive of the positive link between education and left support, uh, resulting in 15 percent, explaining 15 percent of the income education uh, reversal. Now, from our point of view, what we believe, what uh, my co-authors Christian Serena believe, uh, I think they share this belief, is that heterogeneity, heterogeneity is a critical, is a relevant ingredient in the in such a process, uh, and to us it seems to be intrinsically dynamic dynamic in nature. So what we'll be doing here, our purpose uh, uh, in, this, in, this, in this paper, is to develop a macrodynamic model to study the feedback effects between two political dimensions, not one, two, the social, cultural, and the, and the, and the economic distributive. Uh, when human capital accumulation, including human capital accumulation and, and, uh, and the environment. So in a nutshell, what we're going to do, we will present a three dynamical, we, we arrive to a three dynamical nonlinear dynamical system in which, in which the economic distributive political axis is formalized, uh, separating left and right uh, wing agents along lines of the Gilmi, Galanis, and others in a couple of papers in the Journal of Economic Behavior and Organization. And the social cultural axis, we will simplify it to, to the environmental agenda. So supporters and uh, those that don't support or against uh, a green agenda that will be our left and right from a, from a social cultural point of view. And this will be formalized along similar lines of our previous, previous work. The composition of the population, this is important for us, the composition of the population is not given. It will change endogenously. It changes endogenously following a continuous time version of the discrete choice approach. Uh, by, by Broken Homes uh, back in the 90s, is a classical article in Econometrica. And, uh, uh, and we find that the model is compatible with one, three, and up to nine uh, equilibria. Open the door, opening the door to study the basings, uh, the basings of, of attraction. So we, I, I will show you so, a couple of equations, but what is important for me in this presentation is to highlight the story, the main story, our main narrative that is summarized in this diagram. So you, you see that there are two uh, red balls and the two red balls correspond to the to the two political dimensions that I mentioned in the beginning of, of, of my presentation. So the first one is the classical economic distributive dimension. It is captured by this, this index X. And this index X goes between minus one and one. So what happens if that is that uh, if, if the majority of the population is, is right wing, X will be positive. If the majority of the population is left wing from an economic point of view, X will be negative. If the population is equally divided between the two groups, x is equal to zero. And then you have the extremes, x going to minus one, everybody's left wing, x going to plus one, everybody is right wing. Now, the social cultural point of view, the social cultural dimension works in a very similar way. We have our index fee that goes between minus one and one again. So if everyone is left wing from a social cultural point of view, phi will be equal to minus one. If phi is equal to one, it means that everybody's right wing from a social cultural point of view, and so on and so forth. And of course, an agent, an agent can be right wing, for example, from an economic point of view, and left wing from a social cultural point of view. So you can you can have up to four combinations, right? You can, the agent can be, uh, uh, or or the population, or the, you can form a coalition that is right right left left but you can you can have the hybrid cases right left or left of left right now depending on the composition of the population from an economic point of view you will choose educational investments educational investments and how much you will tax the skill premium so the moment that is decided, you will have a certain investment, a certain human capital accumulation, a certain amount of skilled labor, and this will feed back on inequality, because inequality in the model will be captured by the wage differential, okay? Now, from the wage differential, we have a certain amount produced, so a certain production technology that depend, that depend on the amount of human capital uh, in, in this economy, okay? So what happens is that pollution or environmental degradation, CO2 emissions, is a subproduct of GDP, is a subproduct of producing. Okay, so for a certain level of output, we will have a certain level of emissions and, and, and emissions will interfere in how agents vote or how they, they position themselves from a social cultural point of view. Now, depending on which group prevails in this dimension, you will choose the carbon tax that is our investment, our mitigation investments. So you will choose a carbon tax and the carbon tax will feed back on CO2 emissions. 
So a higher carbon tax will, uh, will increase the cost of carbon, carbon. So firms will increase their search for energy efficient production, uh, production techniques. And this will reduce, this will reduce CO2 emissions. So we have, we have a loop, a loop there. All continuous lines. So all continuous lines in the diagram, they describe mechanisms that we studied both, uh, uh, analytically and also numerically. But then the dot lines, the dot lines, they mark mechanisms that we studied only numerically. So we didn't include analytically in the model, but we will have numerical results to show. And there are basically two channels that we will be studying only numerically. The first one links CO2 emissions to skilled labor. And why is that? Because there is some empirical evidence indicating that uh, uh, accumulating emissions over time, they damage human capital accumulation. For example, and maybe the easiest way, the most intuitive way to thinking uh, about this is that one of the results of climate change, one of the results of climate change that in itself is an, uh, an outcome of, of environmental degradation is heat waves. And heat waves impact labor productivity, impact children, uh, uh, um, number of days at school, learning processes, so they damage damage human capital accumulation. The second challenge, uh, channel that we will study only numerically links the carbon tax to inequality. And why is that? Because that, again, there is significant empirical evidence, so there is some empirical evidence indicating that uh, carbon tax are very regressive from a distributive point of view. So because uh, the, the, consumption, the consumption basket of uh, poorer individuals is more carbon intensive. When you adopt a carbon tax, you are kind of penalizing those that, uh, that uh, receive lower incomes. So you can actually, a carbon tax could increase uh, income income inequality. And we will explore that channel, that channel as well. So let me show you a couple of equations. As I anticipated, the main elements here, the population is divided between left and right in two political dimensions. So we have up to four combinations. And the change in political views is not given. It changes endogenously uh, following the discrete choice, choice approach. Now, the economic distributive dimension depends on three main elements. So the first element that we see here is a group effect. And what does a group effect tell us in equation one? Is that if you're surrounded by right-wing people, this increases the likelihood that you will vote right wing. But if you're surrounded by left wing people, you are more likely to support a left wing coalition. The accountability effect that is the second part of, of, of equation one. Accountability tells you that if the economy is doing well, but you have a right wing coalition in power, this increases the probability that you will vote right wing. But if the economy is doing well and you have a left wing power, a party coalition in power, this increases the probability that, that the agent will vote will vote left wing. And finally, the last component is an inequality, is an inequality channel that is basically challenged that people are inequality averse. So if inequality is increasing, if inequality is increasing, this increases the probability that you will vote left wing. But if inequality is falling, inequality is very low and it's falling, this will increase the probability that you will vote right, right, right wing. Okay. And from a social cultural uh, point of view, there are many things that enter here. We have gender considerations, uh, uh, race considerations, migration, rule of law. Um, we recognize the importance of these of this, uh, uh, variables, but uh, given that our paper is about climate change and empirical evidence pointing out on the importance of the environmental variable to what is happening in terms of endogenous clavages, political clavages, we will summarize all these variables that are important but are not critical for our study in this parameter rho SC. Or rho SC. So if rho SC is positive, this means that it's an exogenous trend towards right wing. But if rho SC is negative, that is an exogenous trend uh, towards uh, left wing vote from a social cultural point of view. And, and the last component tells you that, that people respond to pollution, okay? People respond to pollution. So an increased high pollution rates will have an impact in terms of how people how people uh, uh, vote or for a social cultural point of view. And as I anticipated, X and phi are indexes that go between between minus one uh, between minus one and one. Our production technology is quite simple. It's uh, a Leon TF because we want to have complementarity between two factors of production, labor and energy. But there is substitutability between two types of workers. So we have high skill, uh, represented by letter H, and low skill, 
letter L. Okay, so we have susceptibility between the two. And if we use a Cobb Douglas production function, we have a sigma, a sigma that is the wage gap. And this wage gap is our measure of, of inequality. Uh, CO2 emissions are just a subproduct of economic activity. So uh, epsilon is capturing this technical relationship between P, pollution, and Y, that is GDP, that is, that is production. And let me emphasize that uh, there is a, a, the bridge between taxes and po politics happens through two channels. The first one is human capital accumulation depends on private incentives and public stimulus. What are private incentives? Skill premium. So if you look at the screen premium and you see a high skill premium, you want to get educated. What is the public stimulus? Everything else that doesn't depend on this, on this skill premium. But, but, but that will be financed by taxing the wage differential. So depending on the composition of the population, depending on your X, your tax on the skill premium will be higher or lower. If, if there is a left-wing collision from an economic point of view, you will tax a lot the skill, the skill premium. On the other hand, on the other hand, the carbon tax will depend on the composition of the population from a social cultural point of view. So if there is a left-wing collision from a social cultural point of view, then you will tax a lot carbon. Otherwise, you will tax, you would you, you will not tax that much. Okay. So after a series of, of algebraical manipulations, we, we arrived to a three-dimensional non-linear uh, dynamical system uh, on, on X and phi, our, our political variables, our political dimensions, and sigma. Sigma, recall, is the wage premium, so is our indicator of, of, of inequality. And that dynamical system has the equilibrium conditions represented uh, uh, in seven. We adopt a series of, of uh, linear functional forms so that the equilibrium uh, uh, conditions can be represented by the expressions uh, uh, in eight. In eight, but what is important for the moment that we notice is that. Uh, um the, the equilibrium for x, the equilibrium value of x, is determined only in the economic distributive dimension. The equilibrium value of phi is determined only in the social cultural dimension. But then inequality depends on economic distributive uh, decisions. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, it's possible to show it in the paper. We have a working paper uh, circulating, and uh, um, we we have uh, precise or, or rigorous pr demonstrations for the existence of a unique and multiple uh, uh, equilibria, and also the, the corresponding uh, local stability analysis. But what I want to highlight here is that. Uh, uh, um, we, we, we could obtain up to nine equilibrium points. And that's the case that I will, I will, I will dedicate the rest of my presentation. What do we need to get nine equilibria? So to have nine equilibria, first of all, you need a beta one greater than one. And what does it mean a beta one greater than one? A beta one greater than one means that you care about, you care enough about what other people think. OK, so if you don't care about other people's opinions, so you could say if there's no enough interaction between agents, then you cannot have that case. But if, if, if there is enough interaction, so you, you care about uh, opinions, political opinions that surround you, that's one requisite, then you might have three or nine equilibrium points. But then you also need a row one, a row one that is sufficiently high. And what does it mean a row one sufficiently high? That you care enough about emissions. So you, 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 you react to the consequences of climate change. Because if there is no reaction for, to, to, to what is happening in terms of climate change, then of course, there will be no political response. So we are assuming that you care about people's opinion and that you care for good or for bad, but you care about you, you, what is happening in terms of climate change. In that case, you have up to nine equilibria nine equilibrium points. And uh, uh, we, we provide a, a calibration um, based on the literature and on, on some uh, climate and economic aggregates. But from these nine equilibrium points, four of them are stable. And that's our first result, four of them are stable. And the four stable equilibria correspond precisely to the four uh, possible coalitions. A right-right coalition represented in blue. So a right-right coalition means right from an economic point of view, right from a, a, a social cultural point of view, an environmental point of view. You could have a green coalition. A green coalition is a hybrid. It's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a coalition in which you are right-wing from an economic point of view, but left-wing from a social cultural point of view. The magenta corresponds to a left-left coalition. And finally, the red, the red is kind of the opposite of the green because the red is 
left wing from an economic point of view, but right wing, very conservative from a social cultural point of view. And the moment we have these four basins of attractions, what the figure on the right on my slide is showing is the basis of attraction. So we are coloring in, in red all initial conditions converging to the red equilibrium. We, we color in, in magenta all initial conditions going to the magenta equilibrium and so on and so forth. So a second result that I, I would like to highlight here is that you see that in our space, in our 3D space, we have sigma phi and x. Sigma is inequality. So if inequality is very high, let's say sigma is equal to 3 or above 3, then you necessarily will end up in a red equilibrium or in a blue equilibrium. And we, we believe that this speaks about the, 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 the breakup in the relationship between education and inequality in, in voting that we saw uh, in the, or that I showed in the beginning, in the beginning of the presentation. Because what we are basically saying here is that if inequality is very high, then the debate will only be about economics. People will not care about social cultural. So then the debate will be between red and blue. And red and blue, are exactly the, this, this economic distributive con considerations. But if inequality goes to intermediate levels, like it happens after the 70s and 80s, then with intermediate levels of inequality, you care about social cultural elements. You start to care about social cultural elements and you break you break the, the, initial, the, the initial relationship and all four uh, possible combinations become, become possible. A third result that I will I will I will I will stress here is 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 in this slide. So what happens uh, if people care a lot about private incentives, but they don't they look a lot about uh, they look at the skill premium when decided whether to get educated or not, uh, and that that matters a lot. So in that case, a left wing coalition will produce higher inequality than a, than a, a right wing coalition. So you see that magenta, the sigma for the magenta and the red is higher than the sigma for the blue and green. And why is that? Because if people care a lot about, about uh, the skill premium, but then the coalition is a left-wing coalition from an economic point of view, this coalition will tax the skill premium. And the moment they tax the skill premium, this is reducing the skill premium. So less people get educated. Less people get educated, this increases the skill premium and increases inequality. Okay. Of course, if people don't care about uh, in a, about the skill premium when they accumulate skills, then the left wing, uh, from an economic point of view, is able to bring or to deliver lower lower uh, uh, inequality. Finally, we ask ourselves, uh, okay, suppose that we are able to create a, a left wing coalition from a social cultural point of view. So we will implement a carbon tax. Is it enough? To, to achieve negative emissions, because to fight climate change, we need to achieve negative emissions. So what these diagrams are showing, the two diagrams on the bottom are showing, uh, showing uh, 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 the cases in which right coalitions prevail. So if a right coalition prevails, emissions are always positive. That's not surprising. But the two, the two diagrams on the, on the top, the, the diagram, uh, what they are showing us is that even if the left wing coalition prevails, and these two diagrams on the top, left wing coalitions from a social cultural point of view, they prevail, bringing emissions negative, bringing emissions down is extremely difficult. Only in the yellow case, it happens. And what the yellow case has that is different from uh, blue and the orange cases is that technology responds. So when you adopt a carbon tax, firms react, increasing their search for labor, um, for energy saving production techniques. Now, the blue and the orange line correspond to cases in which this search is not very successful. Okay, so if this search is not very successful, emissions don't respond. Even if you have a green coalition or, or a left-wing coalition from a social cultural point of view in power, the yellow line is telling us that you have a strong response uh, of technology, and that that will be perhaps our our uh, final final result. The model is still compatible with uh, some persistent fluctuations. Uh, once we take into account of those two channels that I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, these feedback, feedback channels from emissions to human capital accumulation and for the carbon tax to, to inequality. So in that case, the diagram on the left is showing us that if you have that people care a lot about the skill premium, if people care a lot about the skill premium, then left-wing coalitions left-wing collisions from an economic point of view become unstable and you have these circles in which cycles in which you adopt a policy and abandon a policy but if people don't care enough 
uh, don't care a lot about about uh, the the skill premium, about uh, the, the wage gap when they get educated, then the right wing coalition from an economic point of view becomes unstable and you have these cycles uh, with right wing adopting and leaving uh, uh, um, environmental and environmental policy and the left wing coalitions now from an economic point of view, they become they become stable. So moving to some final considerations, what we try to do here is to present a macrodynamic model to study the interaction between uh, the interaction between uh, uh, politics, the economy and, uh, and the environment. And we try to emphasize that human capital accumulation depends on these publics versus private incentives, when private incentives would mean the skill premium. But the social cultural dimension was, was reduced to the, to the environmental attitudes. And we can think about possible extensions of the model, uh, relaxing that assumption and allowing us to include uh, uh, race considerations, gender considerations, and so on and so forth, migration, etc. The system is compatible. This is our main result. The system is compatible with four stable equilibrium points, the left, 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 right, right, left, and right, right coalitions. Uh, uh, and achieving an equilibrium with zero emissions is not granted. So it's a two, we're talking about a two-step pro pro problem, a two-step process. The first part of the problem is to gain environmental support. So create a coalition that supports an environmental agenda. But the second part of the problem is that you need technical change. You need induced or direct technical change. Technology needs to respond to the carbon tax to achieve negative, uh, uh, negative emissions uh, rate. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, the, uh, when the skill premium matters a lot, uh, a left-wing uh, ED coalition generates higher inequality, uh, and society becomes likelier to choose a left-left or right-right equilibrium. But if the skill premium matters a little, then or doesn't matter that much, then the hybrids are more likely more likely to occur. The social cultural element or dimension matters the most under intermediate levels of inequality. If inequality increases a lot, then the discussion goes between red and blue, okay, only about uh, economics. But uh, uh, under intermediate levels of inequality, that that could explain the disconnect between, or that could be part of the explanation of the disconnect between income and education effects in political in political preference. So thank you very much. Thank you. Obrigado and grazie. Uh, um, and yeah, that's what that's what I had uh, for today. Maybe we can we can uh, uh, move on to 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 um, to our next speaker. I don't know if we have questions uh, for for the for the audience. Uh, um, I don't see questions so far. If if you guys are following us from home or from 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 the University of Brasilia or I don't know which part of the world you have questions, you can, you can just write them uh, write them down and and maybe we can wrap up some questions at the end at the end uh, uh, of the session. Uh, um, I'm seeing uh, Professor Oreiro saying hi, Marwil. Hi, I've, I'm so sorry again for not being able to be in person there. I hope next year maybe we will be able to to, to make that happen. Hi, uh, Yasmin uh, and and Manuel. Manuel, yes, Manuel, that's here with us also at the University of Siena. So let's move on to our next uh, our next presentation. Nandu, I think we can we can uh, uh, you can unmute your microphone and show us your face. <laughs> Hey. Uh, yeah. Camel. Yep. And we can we can uh, continue with your presentation. Nando will be will be talking uh, about uh, 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 public debt dynamics and structural change. So he will be presenting an article uh, entitled "Informal Economies in Transition and Public and Public Debt uh, Dynamics." So Nando, thank you for being with us, and the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Marvel. It's 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 very interesting to be at like in a conference like this where different themes, which are very significant for the global south, is being really into picture. Thanks for the inviting me or accepting my paper for presenting here in this conference to the entire organizing committee. Yeah, so right now I'm in my second year of PhD at the joint PhD program at Tuscany at the University of Siena. And I would be presenting the paper titled Informal Economies in Transition and Public Debt Dynamics. So moving on. So let's see what is informal economy. Like there is a big discussion about informal economy for a long time in the literature. If you see like from a long narrative, there are different perceptions, different thoughts, different ideas about informal economy. But as per ILO, 
informal economy is something like all economic activities by workers and economic units that are in law or in practice not covered or insufficiently covered by the formal agreements or the formal arrangements so this is what is defined by ILO so looking at the main literature of informal economy and informal employment we could see that there is a beautiful paper by Porta and Schlieffer 2014 actually explaining some of the key features or the key characteristics of an informal economy so to them informal economy is supposed to be huge yes it's a big huge one and in fact in data if you see you could see that at least 90 percentage of the employment in overall developing world is actually the byproduct of informal economy and the informal economy when it comes into the size it's relatively small in firm size and said to be really unproductive and kind of stagnant when it comes to the growth narrative yeah let's see it's more from the legal perspectives or law you could see that informal economies are always free out of regulations or regulation is not that what keeps informal firms down. So then it is very significant to see the exact reality of informal firms that it, it is very difficult or it's very rare for the informal firms to become formal. And in general, we could see that or from the data and from the growth story, it is quite clear that as countries develop over time, the informality becomes less important for the growth or for the existence of the growth trajectory moving on so let's think about what was the story we were thinking about in informal economy so the famous beautiful paper by lewis 1954 followed by kuznets 1955 which actually talks more or less incredibly or seminal contribution to the debate on structural change starting from the economies when they start their growth or the development process they would be primarily agriculture or primary economy will be moving to an industrial society then moving or shifting towards a service sector so this is what is more or less the story across the regimes across the narratives across the economic development story we had here but here what i am very curious to answer or to see to differentiate about the paper right now i'm proposing is the transition that happened from agriculture to industry to service is not exactly the reality which we which have been discussed in at least in the last decade when it comes to developing economies where we could see a shift directly from agriculture to the service sector or the tertiary sector at least in a major set of developing economies so this gives a different idea or a different notion to see the structural change element in developing economies so moving on to the major studies or the major literature it's a very broad literature that what i am trying to Showed, showed here but from there the main literature on the economic dualism and the concept of structural transformation shows that there are in, in concepts which have been studied on the perspectives of labor market integration by rock 1991 in the development economics journal then productivity growth is being also dealt into the mainstream literature by Dow and Macmillan 2018 and Aaron Bennett 2019. In the similar way, the, the recent one of the recent studies on the environmental quality and its effect on the structural transformation from the dualism of Lewis is being taught is also learned by Oliveira and Lima 2020. So this is one set of literature. Moving on to the other literatures on informal informality as an element of structural change and transition is being also dealt in a big narrative starting from an exclusion and exit view by Laporta, then the tradable and non-tradable sectors by Rasmi at all, and the wages and informality in uh, developing countries by Mekir Narita Robin, and relatively recently by Gabriel Uliza 2018, studied the extensive and intensive margins of informality. Similar to those studies, there are studies which really concentrate on the sectoral growth when it comes to the agriculture, the productivity in agriculture, industry and the service sector, but mainly by Dow Macmillan Roderick 2019 and Leon Desma and Moro 2020, 2020. So moving on from the basic literature on structural transformation and moving to the other side of the exact story of growth is more about the fiscal policy. So coming to fiscal policy, we could see that there are so many studies about the fiscal policy. One of the prominent study by Barrow 1979, Blanchard 1985, Panitsa and Presbyterio 2014, more about the how to finance the economic growth, especially in countries where growth has to be really put forward by the government or the fiscal policy. 
and on the aspects of deficit financing and economic development, DAO 2012, Vera 2009 are some of the studies which dealt about the relevance of deficit financing for the development of an economy. And relatively recent, 2019, Ribeiro and Lima dealt about the fiscal rule which keeps the government spending to be checked or unchecked is one of the other prominent direction where the fiscal policy is actually moving on. Yeah, so moving to the main topic, main decision, main discussion of the debate is like the dual economy and the credit constraints. There is a paper by Scott and Gomez Ramirez 2018, which also dealt about how this credit constraints has to be taken under consideration in a dual economy narrative. So, so far from the literature on structural transformation and the fiscal policy, it is quite clear that there are different narratives, different notions and different studies, which tries to see both structural transformation and fiscal policy separately. But here, what we are heading to or where we are really heading to is to study the transition or the change or the transformation which happens in the dual economies where the public debt or the fiscal policy dynamics has some importance or really some relevance to determine the transition or the transformation in general. So we would be, this paper would be more or less interested to find the transition dynamics given how does the public debt interaction. So we would be directly going to the paper by Scott 2021, a beautiful paper which actually dealt with dual economies. But here we adopt the discrete choice approach, the classic discrete choice approach of Brock and Holmes 1997, so that we are trying to understand how does this dual economy transition and the public debt dynamics works in a discrete choice model. So let's, before getting into the main model, let's see the basic, basic imperatives or the insights from the literature and data so far. So here we have two variables. The one first variable is X and the second variable is B. So you could see on the X axis, the variable X and on the Y axis, the variable B. And the X is actually the self-employment out of capital and B is the public debt to capital ratio. So the picture itself is clear, but not very clear to an extent, but it is quite evident that the countries with low, very low and low per capita GDP tend to be more or less informal, which means those economies on the negative axis of the X, X actually shows that the countries with very low per capita GDP tend to be informal. At the same time, the public debt tend to be dispersed over from low level to high level. That's more or less clearly evident from the self-employment to debt index, which is being analyzed carefully. Then moving to particularly those economies on the left or those economies on the x-axis, it is quite clear that these are the economies with GDP per capita levels very low, or these are the developing, the so-called developing or emerging economies. They're directly involving to the developing or the emerging economies insights, it is also clear that there is more or less skewed distribution towards informality and public debt but at the same time it's quite unclear that how much dispersion is really happening so it when you see the informal employment to debt index it is unclear that how does the relationship really goes but it is clear that there is a dispersion when it comes to some economies on the developing world actually having high debt to gdp or high debt to capital ratio and on the other variable, if you see the informal size to debt index, it is also quite evident that the pic though the picture is unclear about the relationship, it is quite evident that the dispersion is still exists and with a high debt to capital index for the countries which are relatively informal. So moving from the basic insights or the empirical insights we have done with the transition dynamics and the public debt to capital ratio, Let's see how we can represent the theoretical narrative or the analytical narrative of the model. So we will have a model which starts with a traditionally said to be agriculture. And this traditionally agriculture economy has two choices. The first choice is, first choice is to become either to become formal or the second choice is to become informal. What do you mean by formal in the literature or the study is here the firms or the, the employer 
the representative agents has the option to be either in manufacturing or business services together that is said to be the formal or informal non business services so this is the discrete choice which is being given to the representative agents where the structural transformation actually take them either to be formal or informal which means if they go, if the representative agents move to the formal part and looking from the narrative of the fiscal policy it is quite clear that the formal sector or the formal part of the economy pays tax to the government at the same time receives the expenditure back from the government in form of different subsidies and transfers at the same time when you see the informal economy part actually doesn't pay any tax to the fiscal policy narrative which means it doesn't give any earnings to the government side at the, but regardless of not receiving or not government is supposed to spend to the informal sector of the economy too which means the transition has either transition makes either to be in the formal sector or to be in the informal sector where informal sector tends to have bit burden on the fiscal policy where the formal sector more or less reduces the burden since the fiscal policy has an element of tax coming from the formal sector which means if it, if you if we see the basic understanding about the financing from the literature and from empirical insights it is quite sure that the fiscal policy in the developing world or the economies where the dual economy persists with higher level of informality it is quite sure quite clear that fiscal policy has a big element of public debt public debt which finances the complete budget of the economies in the developing world so from this aspect it is quite clear that a transition to informal economy which does not provide a tax or anything back to the government at the same time the government expenditure remains there is said to be a sub suboptimal transition as in terms it more or less increases the debt burden or more or less increases the fiscal policy burden but when it comes to the formal transition mechanism where the agricultural laborers move to the former or the manufacturing or the business services it has less effect on the fiscal less if burden on the fiscal policy as it tend to reduce or lower the debt supposed to be the desirable transition so we try to understand the same dynamics now through a theoretical model a macro dynamic model which would be a mix of discrete choice approach along with the study of dual economy by scott 2021 so let's move on to the main macro model so here the the basic choice which is dealt with the agents is either to become formal or become informal so this is mainly derived from the famous pa classic paper by brock and homes 1997 so the total labor force or the population in the economy is said to be the combination of like population share in the informal sector and the population share in the formal sector that is the total n now we have the index x which captures the transition choice within the representative agents that tends to be between minus 1 and 1 what is minus 1 minus 1 means if the complete transition is on to be the informal or the sector which is said to be the non business services that shows that it is minus 1 and when the complete transition is towards formal or the manufacturing and business services it is the case of 1 so it is quite evident that the total transition or the transition index x is actually the difference between the labor force in the formal sector minus the labor force in the informal sector as a share of the total population so now the the main aspect about the transition choice is based on the probability so moving on to the probability it is it is it is fine it is enough to find from the understanding that the probability of becoming formal or the probability of going to be in the manufacturing or the business services is based on an exponential function of beta which is based on the value function of being formal to the ratio of the total share of being formal and being informal at the same time the probability of being informal is the exponential function of beta uh, being informal to the share of total informal and formal 
so the the value function being formal the v, the utility or the value function of being formal is actually or the the behavioral policy rule which we keep here is actually the difference between the share of government consumption expenditure in the formal sector to the uh, minus the government revenue or the tax revenue end from the formal sector so the alpha here actually measures the share of government consumption expenditure in the formal sector whereas the t, t by k element or the tax out of capital is actually trying to capture the tax revenue and from the formal sector so this is more about the uh, choice and decision of the representative agents and the production in the economy is actually since we have two sectors the informal sector which is said to be based only on la using labor as its input factor would be having a basic production function of y y as the variable which captures the informal output or the informal production which is said to be constant productivity and the formal sector has a leontief production function which is more or less directly derived from the studies of the scott 2021 then moving on to the aggregate demand, score 2021 is also the reference point for the aggregate demand concept point also. So aggregate demand, which is disaggregated to the consumption investment and government expenditure, where the consumption of the economy is actually the total, totality of consumption out of wage income and consumption out of capital income, where consumption of out of wage income, CW, is consumption in formal sector as well as consumption in informal sector whereas the consumption out of consumption out of uh, capital is merely or di directly from the formal sector where the combination is actually being the out consumption out of the profit income and the wealth effect which is carried out throughout the uh, representative agents consumption period and moving on to the investment we could see that investment out of capital, I out of cap K is, which is G, the investment of the economy, total investment of the economy is captured. And the government expenditure, which is the critical factor of our paper or the analysis, which is determined as a combination of a government share of government expenditure, as I already discussed about the alpha, the share of government consumption expenditure on the transition, which really determines the transition choice of the representative agent along with gamma the government consumption expenditure parameter and a constant parameter gamma uh, bar which is uh, a indication of the government expenditure regardless of the structural transition happening in the economy which actually captures the government expenditure where lf by n or the share of formal sector out of the totality plus the one minus alpha is actually the government expenditure to the informal sector so the alpha which is to be the critical element which decides the government expenditure is the critical variable for the entire understanding of the study then we have the taxes which is to be mainly from the formal sector is a combination of tax from the labor income as the and the capital income along with the interest in uh, ta tax income from the debt or the public bond which is issued and moving on to the debt dynamics it is quite clear that given the function uh, the notion of uh, functional finance in public finance it is quite clear that the, the debt or the fiscal deficit element would be the difference between the government expenditure and the government revenue that is t so yeah, that shows the debt dynamics in the entire economy. And moving moving on to the dynamical system with different steps and different calculations and considerations, we will get a dynamical system where B dot is the function of gamma bar plus gamma and X dot is, is equal to the hyperbolic tangent function of beta uh, alpha minus dot W one minus pi sigma to pi sigma pi ib minus x which would be where actually the b is the ratio between the public debt to capital and given the dynamical system it is quite clear and it is evident that the equilibrium condition b dot is equal to x dot which is supposed said to be zero and understanding the dynamical system at, at steady state it is 
quite clear that there exists a equilibria there exists an equilibrium provided that there the g or the capital accumulation rate is greater than the interest paid on the real real interest paid on the public debt there exists there admits a unique locally stable equilibrium solution for such that d is theta 0 plus theta 1x and x is hyperbolic tangent of omega 0 plus omega 1 d where theta 0 is a particular portion of uh, the total dynamical system and the theta 1 omega 0 and omega 1 differentiate the part of the dynamical system where this b and x are simultaneously satisfied so moving on to understanding more imperatives from the real world we try to have a numerical experiment with the data sets from bricks as the reference point and considering the different parameters for the study we try to simulate the model and the results made us to understand some intuitive notions to the uh, theoretical model which we built and these parameter values are based on the pen world data at, as well as the data from international monetary fund and moving to the basic insights or the initial insights of the study as this is in the initial version of the study and the initial insight shows us that when the condition of g greater than i or the capital accumulation rate is greater than i there exists a unique equilibrium for countries such as india china and russia where the public debt and the informality informality tend to be very much into relationship or the public debt or the formality are quite positive are associated together to be undertaken for the study of equilibrium but in case of the countries or in case of the specificities of south africa and brazil it is seen that there is a divergence or there is an unstable path or structural change when it comes to, because of the main reasoning of interest rate or the real interest rate which is greater than the capital accumulation rate which happens in these economies so moving on to the final considerations of the study since this theoretical model tries to tries to build and analyze the relationship between public debt and structural change elements in developing economies or dual economies more specifically is a stage is in the stage of working progress but from the data and from the numerical exercise it was evident that india is kind of a problem when it comes into the reality or the fact set so this opens up a pathway for us to understand why india is kind of a different narrative narrative when it comes into the analysis of public debt and structural change and this paper also tries to understand the policy main policy takeaways by changing the values of alpha which is said to be the key parameter which decides the transition choice then the tax on wage income and the tax on capital income so that we expect to have some interesting results for the economies which are under consideration that could help us to understand how does the transition dynamics of or the structural change really impacts in the public debt dynamics of dual economies so it is by this by the initial insights and the preliminary results it's quite evident that it is very important and it is relevant to understand public debt and structural change or the public debt and structural change need to be studied together to understand the broad narratives as well as to help in better policy decisions for the countries which are in the high verge of informalities but the initial takeaway from the numerical simulations of bricks it was clear that as far as the government capital accumulation is greater than the real interest rate of paid on the public debt the higher informality comes up together with a higher public debt but when the higher uh, when the capital accumulation is less than the real rate of interest always it is always it is found with the case of brazil and south africa is that it comes up with lower public debt but with a divergence or a unstable dynamics so this open up us to understand the exact reasons behind this dynamics or to understand closely about the relationship between public debt and structural change in the developing economies or the dual economies in narrative thank you 
Thank you, Nando. Thank you very much for a, for a very clear presentation. Thank you for uh, respecting, uh, respecting the time. Uh, again, I, I reinforce my invitation to, to our friends that are following online. It, as, as you are uh, listening to the presentations, and um, at least those that are following the presentation synchronous, uh, if you have questions, just write in the chat, and we are more than happy to, 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 to answer to them or maybe to have uh, a discussion. We, we have our third presenter with us uh, from the University College London, Mu Jong Ko, and I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Uh, uh, but before jumping to the third presentation, and then uh, uh, for this purpose, I will ask uh, Danielle to help us and maybe put the three of us uh, together in the screen uh, for, for, for a couple of minutes. Anandu, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, uh, um, regarding your your model and some of your or your results so um it's it's intuitive for me it, it make quite sense quite quite a lot of sense that g greater than i for g greater than i your equilibrium is stable and for i greater than g your equilibrium is unstable but i was i was curious about uh, the economic intuition of your result that higher formality comes together with higher debt when g is greater than i so uh what is the economic intuition or do you have something to say about yeah. that result thank you uh, first of all first of all thank you for that question it's very important to understand that question at least as a student sure. or more from an economic narrative and it yes it is quite clear that there is a relationship between capital accumulation and rate of interest but how it is important to this model particularly or economic intuition about the model is that uh, the capital accumulation, which is said to be the ratio between the investment out of the investment to capital at the same, that is a big component of public debt okay. when it comes into the developing economies. And this, this goes to the debt dynamics. And when the G is actually greater than I, which shows that the government is actually receiving uh, that the capital is capital accumulation is happening in, in a great in, in, sorry g less than i is a case where the capital accumulation is happening in uh, reduced effect or lower effect when it compares to the rate of interest which is going up in the highs which means in a normal intuition the the payment to the debt or the return to the debt is higher than the rate of return from the capital so which which effectively addresses the problem the capital accumulation is not able to solve the real dynamics in the structural change aspect and which is going to have a burden on the public debt as the rate of interest on the public debt is higher than the capital accumulation okay thank you thank you nando and uh, moving to mu jong ko mu jong ko it's a pleasure to have you uh, uh, with us and uh, he will be presenting and closing this session how can basic income truly act as a trigger for self organizing a new resilient system of agro food and environmental justice mu, the, the the floor the floor is yours Thank you. Could you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Yes. You? I can Could hear you. Hear you? Okay. So great. Okay, thank you. I want to tackle the part. Uh, I think I think I can hear you well. I, um, I, I can see you and hear you very well. So yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And um, okay. Can I unload my slide? Definitely. Mm. How can I unload? Okay, thank you. There you go. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Mm. Okay, could you see that? Okay. Um, hello, um, my name is Mojang Ko. I'm from University College in London. Uh, I study economics and my background is all economics, but I'm also interested in the basic income and some institutional economics and social theory as well. So uh, let me start from the, my title is about this basic income and how can make a basic income act a trigger for self organizing the reality system and for the environmental justice. So let me start. Okay, in current social economic inequalities and different capitalism with the food crisis under climate changes, major adaptations are essential. 
The fundamental challenge is institutional and past institutions are not proper and need great periods of experiment, experimentation, base income. This is why we should look at the basics of institutional economics, particularly radical tradition, out of neoliberal consensus. However, the weakness of challenge is the consensus is weak connection to radical theory, especially by to Prony on the issue, how can basic income truly act to trigger to self-organizing new legend system of agri-food environmental justice, which lead to uh, sub-questions. First issue is, as shown in figure three, substantive micro foundation on how capital system, agro-food system is organized and structured. And even think micro foundation method but its connection to neoclassics, which of which micro foundation is not substantially radical. This issue related to a different perspective of the deeper origin of disorder. The third problem is related to whether the issue how agrarian basic income act is triggered for self organizing is meaningless or not, because individual economic actors do not need to know exactly the contribution to basic income to regularity of macro levels of capital food reproduction, but they fail to recognize that. Uh, corrective actors to self organizing experimental movement, like basic income, full of institutional variable, as, show, as shown in the figure four, market versus no market, and pro capital versus anti capital. Then, first issue is a pragmatization in answer to question whether the basic income truly acts triggered for self organizing the religion system of food and environmental justice, such as yes, no, not sure, with a different reason, which related to last question, if not truly, what is the solution, such as reformist? to look basic income as a short-term supplement for capital system food work better while radical to look basic income as a long-term substitute beyond such a system. Also, there's the ones who think the question is a political, non-scientific understanding, so not to decide which side the fancy stands on. So this paper, my paper tried to answer the five sub question by different understanding on Babylon Flani with case study of Korea. For micro foundation, Babylon used anthropological concept, instinct and habit, which to Polony have radical substantive properties and out of neoclassical economics the conception to homo economics and rationalities. Instinct, which is divided into workmanship to predation influenced on human behavior, which is divided into ones justified by technical knowledges and habit of thought or habituations. As a human behavior, every subjectivities is organized and structured, divided into institution to technologies in objectivity and real world. One, agrotechnologies, smart agriculture, GMO, on climate changes promote the material processes, well-being. Institution, Prom promote ideology planet penetrating the hierarchy system, radically retracted business as usual and ceremonial habit, treating from them as chatter, personal property, which express the basic workmanship good for social pro progresses. This institutional approach can be radically connected to career capital system, the food at pre COVID time which is structured to business to industry in food production sphere, which mean private property institution is based on predatory exploitation of the farm, farm net workers, which serve the radical social classes, structured industry to business, representing workmanship to predation. So conflict in workplace is not because of moral hazard of individual capitalists, but rather institutional problem within radical structure in Korea. This class struggle, which takes a mutual service property between business industry, is now relevant to Korean cases, where, as shown in Figure 5, non farmer workers' ownership dramatically increased to 48.1%. Now, close to farmers' ownership, farm lead workers have struggled against the wage discrimination, overwork, and the right to work to life through imbalances match to constitutional and equal employment work to family balance law. But business out of such request organize their own trust character for non-agriculture, either farmland 
increasing prices with the supporter of the harvest agri food by property rule, private property rule to lift the fuel. So at pre-COVID time in Korea, so such capital, uh, capital institution private property treating prominent merely as a chapter, not fictitious community, as Prani said, is the original disorder in Korean capitalist food system out of landed tears principle based on constitutional law and farmland act. Also under climate changes, if it's agri-food system is the most striking index for community cultural level, it's worth it to reference the next two figures. Figure 6.1 show why ownership by non-farmers in climate changes increased to 48.1% nationwide. Food green self-support decreased dramatically to 20.2% in 2020. And also, as in figure 6.2, under climate changes, such Korean ratio of self-support for food is nearly five times lower than OECD and EU. Then in crisis, in climate changes, how basic income with universal unconditional property support basic economic survivor act as a trigger for self-organization for of instant variable market versus no market and pro capital versus anti capital where Bevelin and Pranian ideas can connect the four aspects like self organizations as institutional properties of changes with a struggle to reorganize this constitute and this structured order out of a disorder out of Marxist terrorism class of capitalism and second the capital as a root result of rule and institution is rooted in the relation of productions and radical substance properties uh, approaches to micro foundation and habit and institution rather than structural function regime. And for post change and correcting macro self regulation and every demand with a connected important aspect of self regulation and self organizations. And this figure showed that Korea is the lowest not only in the community confirmed the COVID 19 cases per million people. But also in government additional spending, including uh, agriculture subsidies to COVID 19 and climate changes in 2021, especially blue colored countries experimenting and practicing agrarian basic income. And these figures show Korea increased its agricultural subsidy 6.6%, but still much lower than OEC to EU during COVID-19 and climate changes, especially blue card countries experimenting or practicing agrarian basic income. And furthermore, as shown in this figure, uh, 8.3, career ratio of agriculture to whole GDP capita during climate changes, COVID-19, decreased to 1.8%, more than two times lower than world average, now closer to some blue card countries, expanded or practicing aggregating basic income, which lead to As shown in the figure, career ratio of agriculture is employment in whole decreased to 4.5% in 2021, now closer to especially blue colored countries, experimenting or practicing agrarian basic income. First, the government, like Marx, post Keynesian, and Karak Keynes, Babylon Planning argument is constant government as a business government to enforce private property is privilege is developed in Korea, where it's shown in figure 9.1, decrease budget for agri-food and climate changes from 4.3% to 2.6%, 9% in 2020, which is even used for private property, uh, private for profit, uh, particularly like uh, not only amend smart farm innovation against the climate changes, but more importantly, agricultural direct payment system, as shown in figure 9.2, unlike a basic income system initiative 
based on farming scale, not human, which is in turn could only for non-farm absentee landlord as not universally unconditionally given to tenant farmers based on livelihood securities. So, so in COVID-19, basic in, uh, emergency basic income is considered necessary, but as a temporal, non-regular supplement, not a selective, non-universal conditional agri-food security system, which makes the basic income insufficient as trigger. And second, investment. Business enter enterprise investment often the investment quality of the basic income supplemented scheme, such as spend hemorrhages, rather than quality of the working condition, which is still very dominant prior in Korea, where, uh, which, which invests in government's agricultural direct payment system into quantity of non-agricultural one, more than agricultural one, including advertising, while practicing disposal of harvest and agri-food for price stab stabilization. And also even being agricultural one, mainly for GM food against the climate changes, as shown in figure 10.1, 10.2, rather than quant uh, quantity of employment as shown in figure 8.4 before, as also quality of the working condition. So COVID-19, in base, uh, emergency basic income is necessary, but as a temporary supplement, not as a substitute of established agricultural system, which can take advantage of basic income to act a trigger to depressing wages. This can be seen, figure 10.3, Rapid increase of the GMO import and use of pesticides and chemicals fertilizers as a response to climate changes ranked the top in the world. But also as shown in figure 10.4, increase of price, uh, food price is 12.6%. It's much higher than economic wage growth's 4.0%, five times higher than OECD in the EU. So the heterogeneous, qualitative different livelihood based on types of the consumption, instrumental, conspicuous, and quantitative one, which can be applied in Korea where emergency basic income can act, triggers, can act to increase 1.1, but also increase of the particularly pent-up or revenge consumption due to chronic discontent was coefficient as shown in figure 11.1, 11.2, but emergency basic income as taken for temporary non-regular supplement is not sufficient to act a trigger to reduce such deeper issue of separation of in um, food insecurities. So as shown in uh, these two figures, uh, this can be shown in the two figure, there's still a big structural issue gap of the food security or household by income level. Lastly, as a separate regular market, market fundamentalist economist ideology make basic income to act a temporary supplement and not substitute, which is fiscally skeptical rhetoric of perversity, petrific, and job thesis, which lead to advocating free trade in the situation food as a weapon in climate changes or free to choose with the wanting it substandard food as a raw process, if it's not second line, and limit the role of agriculture in the future into leisure or tourism, rather than stable food supply, as shown in figure 12.1. And second, pro-capitalist petrolism, like what is good for poor profit, private food company owned by Korean big business is good for Korea, which lead to now trending toward the wide acceptance of GM food as shown in figure 242, while taking basic income supported by around 60% as populism harm to nation. And lastly, the nationalist view, emergency basic income benefit for racial minor as it reverse discrimination to the poor in the Korea. So such ideology act mentor more pain to make family worker to free yeah, the importance of basic income and workmanship. So basic income, in short term, 
can act and trigger perceptual organizations, but in protective way, as shown in figure four, which adapt the basic income supplement to support previous private property institutions, treating farmland as chapter on climate changes out of a land to tears principle, which is related to protrolling dilemma, rocking the trigger for the new system of food crisis justice. So as in figure 13, how to expect the sustainable resilience in long term future as shown in history of a case, Springham land case, uh, which Prani point out. This conclusion is based on first the truth plausible value judgment, right or wrong, which means as long as it invests a form of institution ownership treating farmland as chatter in climate changes, out of land tears principle continue. This content, this utility will continue. So as shown in figure 13, how to predict any peaceful order. This truth can be also approached in history as fact antagonism, different in monopolistic, uh, monopolistic liberalism, increasing disparity of life expenditure by income in climate changes as shown in figure 14. So basic income can actually trigger for new resident system for the climate changes and justice when only connecting radical vision, which as shown in figure 17, like reclaiming radical turning curves upside down and anti capital manner as shown in figure four, as pathways as self direct encounter movement for re embedding society in the biosphere toward sustainable and resident food crime justice and sovereignty with Delta struggled for universal basic income out of pro capital rhetoric reactions based on perversity to maturity and Japanese thesis, rather than reformist one to making capitalist institution or also structuration work better. This connection to basic income to radical vision can act truly only when it's connected to radical forces who practice first to counter movement with the radical adaptation to anti capital process with critical approaches of substance of structurated food system and climate changes. Second, reciprocal working on common principle, universal basic income, not taken into, together with the small hood and public permanent initiative. And third, open to exotic and entirely noble and trying to be a thinker out of proto caves is Korea. And so lastly, align the universal basic income common principle, equality, equity, and liberation of the free system in climate changes. So this is my conclusion. You can see my from aspect as well. Beyond superficial issues of market versus state, change and versus neoliberalism, institutional economics address a deeper real world issue Structuration in capital of agriculture system in Korea, which act as a root and substance of the long-term crisis of food and environment changes. In this crisis, basic income in turn can act as trigger for secularization in the short term, but very truly valuable, effective. Only one is connected, truly connected radical theory of favor and polony with the long-term vision for the resident system, food and environmental justice beyond such a capital system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Uh, as I did before, I, I repeat to the to the audience, uh, if you guys have questions or if you would like to interact more, raise uh, it's a discussion, feel free to write in the chat. Feel free to write uh, in the chat and we have we, we can we can have a discussion or a conversation here. For the moment, uh, uh, Moon Jong, am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, yeah it's perfect. Yes. It's per oh, perfect. I will take that as a compliment. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I have a couple of questions uh, for you. Um, um, basic, I, I'm very, uh, uh, I would say pro basic income. I think basic income is a, is a, is a very, very interesting uh, idea. And uh, uh, so I, I approach your presentation for an, uh, for an, uh, a positive uh, point of view, but I was wondering two 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 things uh, from your analysis and in your opinion, can basic income revert some of the negative trends that you showed uh, in South Korea uh, in terms of ownership and other negative trends that you show? You think basic income could help or could be part 
uh, of re a reversion in these trends. And 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 the second the second question, I, I was a little bit curious on your thoughts uh, on on the decline of the institution of private property. You showed a graph with a decline in the institution of private property. I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more uh, how it fits your analysis. Uh, could you give me the second question again? Because I cannot hear the second question because there's some uh, you showed, of trouble. You showed a graph. Could you say it one more time? You okay. show, yeah. yeah, you yeah. showed a graph with the decline in private property a decline in institution yeah. of private property over time. And I, I was wondering if you yeah. could elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, okay, first question about how do you think about the positive uh, trend of the basic income about the whole nation and society in Korea, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I think very positive about the basic income, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, if you think about the case of the basic income as well as history, okay, actually it started from the 1980s. More deeply understanding, we started from almost 150 years ago. Mm. So when it started its uh, basic income in the 1980s, it started from actually not from the Marxist or post keynesian It started from neoliberals, actually. So yes, it's surprising, isn't it? Right. So for example, middle freedom and the higher cases, they have some kind of even they do uh, manifesto about why basic income is important in the case of Austria. Okay. And based on this one, they try to have many uh, experiments for such as countries in Nordic uh, Europe and Finland. We know that, okay. So they have some kind of experiment with a couple of uh, two decades, 20 years, and they fail. Mm -hmm. So now it's the Korea they try to do, and we look at it, why is it fail? And why is how can we revert this kind of the negative things of basic income? And how can changes to the, that kind of negative thing to do more positive thing, okay? So the first thing when you apply it to put cases, okay? Put case studies, so I think it's the most big, big issue is that the private institution, because that is always make the people to uh, to make uh, uh, some kind of some, some kind of sabotage process, which I said about that there's one of the issues the Korean capital system of the food. So such as uh, make people to, uh, the family owner try to make a, the landlord, okay, idle, not to make some kind of a more pro productive and make him profit by outcome. Because they make it, so they think about that, that, that is exactly the reason it goes and why uh, family is in national, nationwide Korea is really reducing. So the government tried to make it some kind of such a issue by making the green belt, okay, not making touch and making it more public. And we think about more public agents to make the, uh, uh, food system or public reason, okay. But even though, if you look at the history of the whole period of capitalism, okay, from 1945 and 1968, and which you call it the colonial capitalism, okay, which is called as well as the Keynesian period of the uh, glorious capitalism system, okay, we have the same system as well. We did the same same period of like that. And 1980s, 90, uh, now the two, uh, 2020, okay, from now neoliberalistic and monopolistic system, okay, we also did the same same system right like there. But we need some kind of third way. But I don't I don't think that's a third way because it's the basic income try to make the people the farm 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 uh, landlord uh, farm farmer workers uh, farmer workers to get more automate uh, autonomous to make it their own landlord because we try to give to then the details principle based on the details principle to make have their own property of the land do you understand what i'm talking so so there is a kind of the, we try to take out which is the person who have land in in, in, in rural areas to leader by leader to take to people to non uh, the farmer workers truly farmer workers to provide the basic income so actually it's experimented this kind of processes for 10 years and the, the experiment actually we started from is uh, political parties which called is a basic income party it's 10 years ago we, we making uh, for the first time in the history all over the world and we experimenting is a very, very small scale like that very much successful but there's a still issue because every time we have a change in regime of government for the liberalist or more, uh, more conservative party where they make, make it, they hold the power in the regime. 
they reverted their our uh, effort, and we try to make it, and then uh, it's better to have some kind of constitution to change such of the basic income as one part of the abandonment of the constitution role. So that is our try to do make it. And now, in the last uh, six or seven years, we try to make this effort and making the good positive impact is going on nowadays. That my answer is also linked to your question, second question, I think, because you talk about the private private properties, why there is some kind of bad bad impact or the uh, decreasing of my graph is decreasing of the uh, decreasing of the um, uh, accumulation regime, which open court is actually is a promise. Um, I most uh, which is which is open comes from its uh, actual Marxist perspective, okay? If you understand the post Kenya as a Marx and Keynes, I'm, I'm much proud of this when I analysis of uh, positive, positive analysis on the process of the capital accumulation is more Marxist than rather than Keynesian, actually. So that is my, but I do not follow so much as a, a certain uh, portion of the Marxist territory of the class of the capitalism, especially the product uh, system, okay? So because I understand the self-organization and self-regulation, which is the curriculum ideas of the circular process of the, uh, circular process of the uh, understanding of, uh, 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 deeper understanding of the that one. But we need to understand what is a truly different understanding is Marx, uh, which uh, approaches that, uh, a uh, capitalist the institution of the private property is a really deeper uh, um, issue, which make us think about the deeper structuration between uh, farm and workers and the rent rural owners. And also that is also proven by the, the government data and also ILO data. You can see the ILO data is a special part of the food, food sector and agriculture sector. You can find them in data. It's surely the special in Korea, not only in Korea, actually Latin America as well, okay. A Brazil case as well, as well, which I look at the uh, look at the case of Brazil. They also practice some kind of basic income actually. So, uh, so that is I with think Bolsa it's, uh, Familia, with Bolsa Familia. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So um, I think many countries also uh, two years ago have a presentation about its basic income is the BN, which is the basic income uh, network. Is conferences I have uh, talking about. I had some feedback about the Brazil case and. Uh, I'm actually focusing about the Brazil, what they're doing, and small palmer working, and how they uh, give some kind of token or the coupon to making some kind of you know permanent workers. Okay, so there is a very interesting, and um, in Korea actually some radical economists like including me, we try to adopt this set of cases of Brazil. Okay, so um, um, there's one, one of fantastic cases we see against Iran from uh, our countries. But when I look at the Brazil cases, they are on the process to practice landed to tillage principle, which is out of the private property institution about land and about land and food. So I think it's uh, actually your question can be answered by the case of the Brazil. Actually, <laughs> it's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, maybe uh, Daniel, if you can put da Nando. Nandu again uh, in the screen. Thank you guys for, for a very productive, I would say a very productive session. Uh, it was It's supposed to be a short session because we only have three presentations scheduled, but, uh, but I, I thank you again for being here and for the opportunity of, of interact with, you, with your research. We don't have any more questions from the audience, so maybe we can continue following uh, uh, the program and the next sessions as they are scheduled in the YouTube channel. We thank our viewers that follow us from their universities, from Brasilia, from uh, different parts of the world, and uh, I wish everybody a, a wonderful uh, workshop. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.